please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up before the video starts. One of the reasons Jack was a good sponsor for Nikki is that he was willing to go the extra mile to help her out of a crisis, but the jabbed head may have crossed too far over a line from which he will struggle to return. Even young and restless Peter Bergman suspects that his alter ego has set himself up for big trouble ahead. Jack's claims seem legit enough. Nikki was on the verge of drinking herself to death, and the only way to pull her back from the edge was to shock her out of her vodka-induced haze. How? By falling or throwing himself as the case may be off the wagon along with her. The bright side, it worked. Nikki, horrified by the sight of Jack giving up his sobriety to party with her, suddenly began to panic. By the time her trusty sponsor actually started downing pills with his alcohol, she was clear-headed enough to call the paramedics to save his life when he passed out. The downside? Jack could have died, and if he had, he would have sacrificed not only his sobriety, but his very life for his ex-wife, Nikki. A fact that's bound to be a sticking point with his wife, Diane, who does not do well with feelings of insecurity. She will happily pin an arson or murder charge on you if you cross her. Yep, Diane is bound to be upset with Jack's willingness to go to such extremes for another woman. But that's not the only issue. Jack is a married man with a family who didn't seem to be thinking about them at all when he decided to take such a risk. For that reason, we think the honeymoon's over for Jack and Diane. And we're not the only ones. In a recent interview with Soap Central, Bergman was quoted as wondering how Jack and Diane will survive this. We think survive is an interesting choice of word because it implies that they're headed for a breaking point or a crossroads. Will they even make it? Bergman's hoping they can dig deep. Sounds to us like some juicy scenes between him and Susan Walters, and we're here for it. Another downside to Jack's decision. He actually did sacrifice his sobriety. It wasn't a tease. It wasn't an illusion. He didn't pretend to get sloshed and high. He called his old dealer. He drank the vodka. He swallowed the pills. To the point of losing consciousness. That may not be as easy as he thinks to come back from, especially given the stress the cosmetics air deals with on an ongoing basis. His rivalry with Victor has been reignited over this. His sister Ashley is losing it as alternate personalities battle it out in her head. His wife and son are fighting at work, and he's about to face a dark chapter in his marriage. Will he be able to weather these storms without slipping again? We'd love to say, yes, but Jack broke in that hotel suite with Nikki. For real. Worrying about Ashley, finding Nikki drunk, and dealing with the kidnapping of his grandson by a psychopath proved to be the tipping point. Even as he pontificated about his stress to Nikki for show, we could see it was real. As Bergman explains, I think Jack has convinced himself this is a one-off. This happened once, and it went way too far, and it's not going to happen again. And you know how dangerous that talk is. Dangerous indeed. Sobriety may prove to be more of a challenge than Jack anticipates, especially with all of the drama in his life. Which, by the way, may only multiply as young and restless spoilers have Phyllis and Diane going at it again by week's end.